Welcome back. Let's now make coding even more fun and actually take decisions with our code to make it look a lot more real. So let's say that we want to write a program which checks whether a person is allowed to start taking a driver's license or not. And if she is, then it will print that to the console. And if not, it will print how many years are left until the person can start taking the driver's license. So let's start with an age and let's set it to 19. So we have this age and we already know how to check if this age is at least 18, which is the legal required age to start a driving license, at least here in Europe. So let's actually create a variable with that. And I think we actually already did that. Let's call this one is old enough. So again, with a variable name that describes exactly what we want here. So remember to check if the age is at least 18, we need it to be greater or equal than 18. And so this will then include 18. So if the age is 18, the result of this operator here or of this operation will then be true. Only if the age is 17 or 16 or anything below, it will turn out to be false. Okay, so we have a Boolean value now, and we can use this to take decisions using an if statement. And the if statement works like this. All we have to do is write if, then open parenthesis, and then in here goes a condition that is evaluated. And if this condition turns out to be true, then this block will be executed. So basically, whatever code that we write into this block, which is denoted by these curly braces, will be executed whenever the condition that's here is true. So in this case, let's put the condition. And with condition, I basically mean something that is a Boolean value. So let's use our is old enough variable here, because we already know that this will always be a Boolean. So again, whenever this value here is true, then the code that's in this block here will be executed. And if it's false, well, then it's not going to be executed. So let's block to the console. Sarah can start driving license. And let's just add a fun emoji here. And on the Mac, that's command control space. And on Windows 10, the shortcut is Windows plus the period sign. But adding the emoji here is also not really important. So let's give it a save and try this out now. And indeed, we get Sarah can start her driving license. And that's because the age is 19. And so it's above 18. So this is true. And so if is old enough is true, then this block of code here will be executed, which in this case is just one line, but it could of course be multiple lines. So now let's put it to something else. So 15. And so now this is false. And so then this code block here should not be executed. So give it a save. Let's try. And indeed we get no output this time. And so that means that it worked. So let's put it back to 19. And in practice, we always write this condition uh, directly here. So let's do that. So what we want is just this part. So let's get rid of this. And so this is a lot more common. Let's actually get rid of this. And so we basically do this operation here. This will then return true or false. And depending on that, this code block will then be executed. And actually, let's put it back to 15, because now we can do something else, which is to actually add an else block. And we do that simply by writing else right after this first if block, and then we add another block. So what do you think this else block is for? Well, this else block will basically be executed whenever this condition here is false. So right now, the age is below 18, and so this is false. And so as we already know, this block here will not be executed. Instead, the else block will be executed. So whatever code we have here. So 
let's write some code in here. And as I said in the beginning, we will calculate how many years are left for Sarah to start taking her license. So let's uh, calculate that. Years left. And so that's simply 18 minus the age. Right? And then we can log in a nice string to the console which contains this variable. And as we learned in the last lecture, the best way of doing that is to use a template literal. So back ticks, and then we say Sarah is too young. Wait another, and then we insert or placeholder here, basically. So years left, and then years. Okay. So the result of this should be uh, 18 minus 15, which is 3, and so we should see, wait another 3 years. So let's check that. And indeed, that's exactly what we got. And so again, since this condition here, so this operation basically turned out to be false, then this block of code was executed. Great. Just keep in mind that this else block is actually optional, right? So in the beginning, we didn't have this else block and it still did work. So when there is no else block, JavaScript will then simply move on to the next line after the if statement in case that the condition is false. Great, now you know what an if else statement is and how it works. And this is actually one of the most important things in programming. We take decisions with code all the time, which is essentially what we did here, so that we can execute certain parts of our program based on certain conditions, okay? Now what we have here, this if else statement, which is the official name of this kind of construction here, is called a control structure. So basically this if, this structure here is called an if else control structure. And it is called a control structure because this structure actually allows us to have more control over the way that our code is executed. For example, in this if else statement, the whole code does not just execute in a linear way. So JavaScript does not execute all of this code here linearly. Instead, we can now control blocks of code that should execute and blocks that should not execute. And so again, that gives us a lot more control over how our code works. And that's why this is called a control structure, okay? And there are other control structures that we're gonna go into a bit later. All right, so I hope that you can see how this really takes our code to the next level. Now, just to make sure that you really understood this concept, let's create another very small and simple example here. And this time, let's actually create a variable conditionally and not just always use console.log. So let's create a birth year variable I think we don't have it in this uh, lecture yet. That's right. And so now what we want to do is to create a variable called century, which will basically contain the century in which this person was born. So in this case, uh, it was the 20th century. But for example, if the person was born in like, let's say 2015, then it would be the 21st century. So to do that, we can of course write an if else statement. So we can say if the birth year is below or equal to 2000, then let century equal 20. And so that then means the 20th century. And if not, then let century be 21. So we're assuming that the person is not born in like the 19th century. So we're not accounting for something like this, for example. So instead we always have the 20th or the 21st century. Now to actually make this work, we need to define the century variable outside of the if or else blocks. We will go deeply into why that is 
But for now, what you need to know is that this is because a variable that we define inside of any code block, which is what this here is. So this is a code block and this is a code block. And any variable that we declare inside of one of these blocks will not be accessible outside of the block. So let me just show that to you very quickly. So if I try to read century now, then I will get uh, uh, an error here. You see, century is not defined. And so what we need to do is to define century outside and simply leave it empty. And then in here, we can then conditionally reassign it. Okay. And so now let's see how this works. And indeed, now we get the century 20. So 1998 is below 2000. And so this person was born in the 20th century. Now let's say 2012. And so that should now be 21st century. And indeed, that's exactly the result. So I hope that this example too made sense to you. Now, don't worry about the fact that we had to declare the century variable outside of the blocks. What matters here is that you understand the logic of the if else statement. Okay. And I hope that was clear enough. But anyway, let's quickly recap. We can take decisions using code using the if else statement. And for that, we write if, and then we open up parentheses and in there we need a condition. And the condition is essentially any code that returns a true or a false value. And so this is a perfect example of that because this operator here will return true or false, right? And so we can use this operator to create a condition essentially. Then if the condition is true, this block will be executed. So all the code that is in there, no matter how many lines of code there are. Now, if the condition turns out to be false, then this else block will be executed instead. So JavaScript will then skip this first block and go to the second block, which is this one. But the else block is actually optional. So if you don't have the else block, then simply no code will be executed. And this in a nutshell is how the if else statement works. And remember that this is really powerful. So make sure that you really understand how this works. And when you do understand, then you can move on to the next video where there is a small challenge waiting